Hello everyone and welcome back to Taito Ecology and today we are in Pyrite Canyon, our desert biome, checking in on how the desert biome is doing and oh my goodness you guys, look at this, look at this, it's just fields and fields of adorable sleeping baby bunnies, I am so enchanted by this, except look at them, oh my gosh you guys, look at them, they're just snoozing away, just passed out, are you dead? Okay that one's dead. <laughs> But all of the other baby bunnies are just snoozing and they're so cute, but they're totally destroying this area They're eating the sagebrush into the ground. Oh my gosh I mean and they have nothing to eat They're gonna starve to death if they keep this up So we're gonna play Santa Claus and we're gonna come over with all of these sleeping baby bunnies And we're actually gonna put down some food. All right, so what happens if we put some grass down here? How quickly is it going to vanish on us? And let's also get down. How about some of the honey mesquite? Oh, and the sweet acacias. Oh, those are pretty. Oh my gosh, the grass is gone. Okay, so we have some very hungry baby bunnies. Some extremely, extremely hungry baby bunnies. So let's go ahead and get lots and lots of grass put down because we need to feed all of these little guys. And then we need to check in on the rest of our biome. Because if you remember, we are keeping this desert biome hopefully for a very long time. That's our big goal is to be able to keep this biome moving, grooving, and going for years and years and years. And I think it's not even two years old yet. Yeah, it's not even two years old yet. So I really want to come in here and keep the desert biome moving moving more often because I want to see our tortoises get big enough, big and old enough, that we are able to get the special achievement that you can get with tortoises in this biome. So let me see if I can pull up that achievement. And that is actually dun 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 Have I not? Oh, cool. I needed to collect the rewards on that. Dun 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 dun. It's team tortoise. Have a desert tortoise reach maturity. And I think to have them reach maturity, you need to have them be like several years old, perhaps. And then I also want to get um, an agave plant blooming by being in our biodome long enough for that to happen. And I can't remember how long the desert tortoise takes to reach maturity, but it's a pretty long time. And I think there's another achievement that has to do, okay, so that would just have to do with the agave. But yeah, I wanna have a desert tortoise reach maturity. Hi, buddy. And here we have a proghorn antelope who's hanging out over here as well. So where are our desert tortoises? We've got all of these baby bunnies scattered everywhere. Oh my gosh, more fresh baby bunnies. We've got fresh baby bunnies popping out of the ground. So they are currently, there's another, there's so many dead baby bunnies everywhere. It's horrifying on one level. So we need to feed them, but these are fresh baby bunnies being born. So they're coming down from where the spawn point is, but they are being born. Oh my gosh, they already ate that entire patch of grass. That is where they're born is they'll they'll just pop out of the territory marker when they add to the family. So I need to give them plenty of food. Yeah, they're already completely going through and destroying whatever food I put down. So I need to make sure they have a few trees. I need to get more grass on this side for them to be able to eat. And I think we actually need to add in, oh my gosh, they already ate all that grass. <gasps> And I think we need to add in more omnivores or more predators to kind of help keep the rabbit population under control or else they're going to eat all of this grass and our antelope aren't going to have anything to eat. Um, I wonder if they, oh my gosh, they ate that one too. They're just merciless. They're so hungry. Oh my gosh. And I wonder if they're going to bother my tortoises. So that's really the only thing I'm kind of worried about is this biome we plan on just keeping going for a long long time and right now we get to have the phase of the baby bunnies way too many baby bunnies but we get to have the phase of the baby bunnies and just kind of enjoy having them here but what i really want to be able to see and we'll just sprinkle grass down as we go oh look and there's so much grass over here so clearly we don't have baby bunnies on this side oh there's a couple of them though there's a couple of them what I really want to see are my desert tortoises. There you guys are. And they're all just snoozing away. And yeah, so we want to keep these guys alive, protected, and growing until they reach maturity. And then that is what will unlock their special achievement. And I think that, yeah, 6,085 days until maturity. How many years is that? I can't do that math. I am a little embarrassed because I'm so poor at math. But let's see. Like... It's a lot. 
<laughs> so we need to have him going for like, I think well over a decade, almost two decades before our little tiny desert tortoises are going to be big enough and strong enough to earn that achievement. But they're the whole goal of what we're trying to work towards. <gasps> That's a dead, busy, dead, a dead desert tortoise. No, who has eaten you? Who has consumed you? How dare they? So we're going to take care of those guys. And I think that we don't have that many predators in here right now. Oh, look, there's a coyote. We do have the coyotes, but I don't think too many creatures can actually eat the desert tortoises. They've got their consumer eat tough buff so they can be protected. Um, and it looks like, <gasps> um, oh no, that's tough to consume. And then this consumer can eat tough light forms. Well, these two aren't doing it and we don't have a cougar and we don't have a collared peccary over here. So I don't know who killed my desert tortoise. Huh. I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. Okay, mushrooms, jackrabbits, low population. Coral snakes are starving. So coral snakes actually rely on other snakes to eat. So let's go ahead and look at our territory markers over here and see what situation we're currently in. The bobcats. Ah, the bobcats can eat my tortoises. No, bobcats, go eat all of those jackrabbits. Don't eat my tortoises. Oh, that was bad placement on my hand. Oh man, so we're gonna have to protect our little tiny population of desert tortoises. I'm quite concerned for them. I'm gonna add in some food over here. Oh goodness, maybe I should have a secondary population of desert tortoises just in case, just in case they're not gonna be left alone. And then I'll put down some agave. And so the agave you have to have, uh, I think to get the other achievement, you need to have it actually flower and put down babies so little agave babies and then you keep an eye on them there's a popcorn antelope i'm like dutifully protecting my little tortoises because they're just so adorable i like how they get bigger as they get older that's adorable all right what else are you guys eating i'll put down plenty of food for my little tortoises they're they're wandering around getting some food all right where are the babies going i would actually really like to see what they prefer eating and i'll make sure i put more of those in there all right, where are you going to get your food, buddy? Oh, to this guy, the desert spoon, huh? Oh, look at that. He ate a whole six leaves. Oh, my. Don't know how the desert spoon is possibly going to handle that kind of uh, eating from its little herbivore friend there. Goodness gracious. All right, well, we'll go ahead and put some desert spoons over here because this is at the edge of their territory. All right, so yes, all right, how's our desert doing? Plenty of stuff over here, and yet nothing eating the stuff, and somehow a low jackrabbit population. That's fascinating. I think that's from coyotes. So we'll go ahead and I think put down some proghorn antelope on this side as well, because it looks like there's plenty of grass to be able to support proghorn antelope populations. Uh, maybe a honeybee in order to help with the pollination. Oh, there's honeybee right there. Okay, we've got extra honeybees now. And then maybe some ants. This is an area that I don't think we ever really expanded into. So we'll put some ants in here. Maybe some moths. And I think we can even add another jackrabbit population or two. We'll put them kind of on this side. And it looks like we need some millipedes and some mushrooms just to bring this area more to life. I'm feeling more comfortable with just kind of putting anything down. Oh, and look at our cactuses. They're blooming. Oh, that's so pretty. Wow, that really is so pretty. Ah, and there's a coyote. All right, don't eat my tortoises. You can, you can pretty much have free range of eating all of these jackrabbits because they reproduce so quickly, but not my tortoises. All right, and then there's those guys. And let's put down a few trees over here too. Because it looks like the trees are able to withstand, these guys are able to withstand the hungry, hungry jackrabbits a little bit better. At least I would put a tree down here, but there's too much grass, so never mind. But they're able to withstand the hungry jackrabbits a little better than the grass can. So we'll see how that goes. There we go. But yeah, now that I'm feeling more comfortable with all four of the original biomes being more uh, moving experiments, like mobile experiments, I am fine with putting things down as long as we like have our one or two little goals. And then, like I said before, we are going to keep the last two biomes. This group is starving, so we need to add more food in. We're going to keep the last two biomes for our experimental biomes where we do very specific things. But otherwise, it's just watching a living story unfold in front of us. That's kind of what life is, and that's kind of what our biomes are. And our living story today is jackrabbits everywhere. Look at the family of jackrabbits. They're working their way over here. These guys are eating the grass, too. 
So I think we just kind of need to get some desert spoons and grass and cactuses interspersed among the rest of the population. Let's see, group of kangaroo rats. Where on earth do I even have kangaroo rats? Those kangaroo rats just never survive. Every time we have kangaroo rats in the desert, it's just a matter of time. Oh my gosh, everybody's starving to death back here. Holy moly, hang in there. Like the Santa of grass is coming, I suppose. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, I think we actually need to put an omnivore down here to try to balance out the side effects of having so many tiny jackrabbits because they are eating everything into the ground, leaving nothing to survive. And as a result, they starve to death because there's no balance. There's so many jackrabbits. And look at that, like that, that's what I mean. There's so many jackrabbits that they're eating everything to the ground as quickly as I can put it down. So really the only true solution here is to put down somebody who would eat those jackrabbits. So I kind of want to have maybe another bobcat. Um, but let's see, like we could put a coyote. Look at them, they're like locusts. Oh my gosh, we could put another coyote down and have them be over here. And they have the tough to eat buff uh, as adults. Wow, they're just destroying everything. But I think a bobcat would actually be a good thing to have just to try to help keep the population down. Maybe over here, that would be two bobcats. Um, and maybe some badgers, actually. I think the badgers could potentially help pr actually protect the forest, protect the plants, because they would be around here and they would be keeping the populations down because they're starving to death right now because they're just eating everything. So bobcats and badgers, and we'll see if that helps out. I don't think that, yeah, look at all of them. Are they just like starving to death? That's so sad. We were trying to give them more food, but they're just eating it as quickly as we put it down. All right, there we go, some sweet acacias. And we'll have to see how that goes. Yeah, I actually think a bunch of the babies just starved to death. So better that we set some predators in there. A couple a couple desert badgers, which is kind of interesting. And a couple more bobcats. And we'll see if this can bring a little bit more balance to the desert. Because it's just kind of tragic watching everyone starve to death over and over and over again. And then it also kills all of the plants. So the plants can't stick around and spread. And as you can see, this area truly looks like a desert where nothing has survived, nothing is alive. And this area doesn't because the grass was able to spread. It wasn't overeaten. So that's kind of our goal is to find that, man like that balance, that maintenance where the populations can still keep going. They're not going to just like die off so suddenly. There we go. But that does mean we probably are gonna have to add in a few more predators. So I'm kind of sad that you can't put fennec foxes in because that would be amazing if you could have little fennec foxes. Look at them! <laughs> Destroying them as quickly as we put them down. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm kind of sad you can't have little fennec foxes because that would actually be pretty fun. And I don't think the rattlesnakes are gonna do anything, but I'm just gonna put some down just in case. And we'll see if rattlesnakes help with rabbit populations, but I don't think I don't think they do. And we definitely don't have enough food to even risk putting down anything like the <laughs> the deer mice. There's just no food here because they eat it all, and that's that's uh, not balanced. We're looking for, like I said, that balance between having enough food that we can keep some populations going, but not preserving them indefinitely, exactly how they they started out. All right, there we go with some weekly income. So that's kind of how Pyrite Canyon is doing. And let's go ahead and we'll check in in our bamboo grove now. So we're gonna leave this to its very slow start on hopefully some semblance of recovery for the desert and all of the jackrabbits that we have within it. And then we'll go check in on bamboo grove and see how it's doing so that we can work our way before the end of the week back over to our wolves. All right, so let's go check on bamboo grove. All right, and here we are back in our beautiful bamboo grove biome. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty here. Every single time, I just wish I could spend all of my time in here. It's amazing. And we have our little pikas. Pikas. What's up, little guys? Oh, they're getting so big. They look so big now after looking at all those baby jackrabbits. And we have our goji berry bushes. So it looks like those guys are doing fine. And look at that. It's one of our little fanged deer wandering on by. We've got plenty of bamboo. Here's some of the honeysuckles. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty. 
They're so pretty. I love being here. Oh, hey, it's one of the bears. So one of the bears is snoozing here. We've got a little tiny sleeping mouse deer over here. All right, here's some of the moths. There's another snoozing bear. Here's some of the pikas running by. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. All right, so everybody seems to be doing pretty well. There's a marmot. And see, this is more what you expect. You know that there's life and death going on, but you kind of want to see it on a balanced scale. So there's always things moving around. Look, there's a little baby pika under the honeysuckle. <gasps> oh, you're so cute. You're so cute. Yeah, you kind of want something. There's a fang deer wandering by. A little bit more balanced. And that's kind of what we're shooting for over in our desert biome as well. So it looks like things are going really well here. In fact, they're going so well. What are you doing? Are you, are you, are you dead? Nope, you're just sleeping. <laughs> They're going so well that I've actually been thinking about adding the uh, the elephants in pretty soon. I'm really excited. I think I do want to add elephants in soon. I think that the Himalayas biome, which is gigantic, just look at the sheer size of it. The Himalayas biome has been doing very, very well. It hasn't uh, gotten too overpopulated. It hasn't gotten too imbalanced. It looks like the little fox is off to go find some food. So the red fox is doing okay. And I think even adding in some of the predators hasn't really overdone things. Because look, we have a baby panda running by. And it grows up in 95 days. Huzzah! It'll be, it'll be a big panda soon. And somewhere over here we should even have the pangolin. Yeah, look! See, there's another, another one right there. Little baby. He's not going to grow up for a long time though. So he's going to be itty bitty for quite a while. So we're able to sustain populations of certain creatures. We're able to add in some omnivores and predators without everything collapsing. And that's the kind of balance I really love. It's so exciting. I really do need to add in tons more bamboo though, because we're going to be adding in more pandas and elephants and things like that. So let's turn on our territory markers. Keep an eye on what's going on. Our rhinos, are they gonna have babies sometime soon? Our rhinos are still about a year and some days away from having babies, like a year and a third a year away from having babies. So we'll keep an eye on them, but everybody seems to be doing good. Red foxes are doing good. The only thing that isn't doing good are the mushrooms as they are constantly being consumed. There go the bears. So they're doing okay wandering around. Lots and lots of little pika populations. So they're doing okay too. So what are the reports? Mushrooms, mushrooms. And then actually it looks like we're starting to see some predation because we have some low groups of our little deer and some low groups for some of our pikas. And some mushroom populations are really suffering. I would think that's the pikas spreading around and eating everything. Yeah, because they've been splitting, as you can see. It's really interesting to watch this. Yeah, look at all these splits. So we have had quite a few groups spread out and eat all of the mushrooms in that area. Yeah, it looks like we're out of mushrooms over here. So we need to add in some more of our decomposers so that this area doesn't become too overrun with all sorts of dead matter and nasty stuff. So we'll come over here. And then I think we may work on adding in some more bamboo because some of you guys have told me that the bamboo is actually very much in uh, request, very much in demand when it comes to uh, the elephants. And I don't know about that. We'll have to, let's see, what, what does the bamboo say? All right, no, I don't want that. Let's see, bamboo. What eats you? What eats you? Is it gonna tell me? Um. No, it doesn't really tell me who eats it. Red pandas and giant pandas love it. It is pretty low in nutrients. So also I do want to add in more pomegranates because pomegranates are a fruit, a fruiting tree. So they're pretty good. The honeysuckles are also really good because of that fruiting issue. And so are the goji berries. But yeah, not today, but really, really, really soon I want to add in elephants. And I'm always so nervous with those things because this is one of my absolute most favorite biomes we've ever done. And what happens if we add so many things into it? Are we going to collapse everything? Ah, oh, it's so nerve-wracking. All right. Well, really, it's not really, to be honest, because even if we do collapse everything, we can come back in, add in more plants, and just try again next time at preserving a little bit more of that balance. So let's see what we would actually need for elephants. Let's see if we can look up their information really quickly. Dun 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 dun. And actually, I do want to add more red pandas over here. Dun 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 dun. And eventually get to the point where we can put in snow leopards. I'm pretty sure I want snow leopards in this zone. All right. So do I want to? Let's go ahead and unlock the Asian elephant and the Bengal tiger, just to finish unlocking everything that we'll have in here. And I need to look up the biodex. 
Asian elephant. They eat about 150 kilograms each day to survive. They eat grass, which actually bamboo does fall under grass, leaves, bark, and stems, but also enjoy bananas and other fruits. Wood apple is a particular favorite. All right, good to know. And then tigers mostly prey on the elephant calves, but otherwise it doesn't look like too much messes with them. They play an important role in the ecology of their homes. They defecate up to 18 times a day, which sounds gross, but that actually means they're mobile seed transports. They eat lots of things. They eat lots of fruits, they put those seeds in their bodies, and as they poop, they leave behind the seeds in a giant pile of nutrients for them to hopefully grow in. In fact, some things, yay, some things actually have a hard time growing unless they have elephants helping them out. I wonder if we've added in, I mean, we'll put in some oak trees over here. This is kind of like, I want it to be a bit of an elephant highway, if you can't tell. <laughs> and I do want to have more red pandas underfoot over here too. So let me put down some red pandas in just a second, and some rhododendrons. I really loved how we've made this such a, um, a variety biome and we've been very careful in adding things in in variety so far because it makes it so much fun to come in and just see all of the different colors and all of the different plants. So we'll put in some wood apples if I can because they're much liked by the elephants. All right, wood apple over there and we'll add another wood apple over here so it'll be a little population of wood apples for them to enjoy and then i don't think there's too much over here in terms of predators or anything like that so we can come down and i want to put in oh man it'd be hard i kind of want to put a tiger on one side and the um and the snow leopard on the other side because we already have the gray wolves in a different area all right, Asian black bear, red panda. Let's put this little guy down here. There you go, red panda. I wanna see good, healthy red panda population over here. Uh, they are omnivores. Bird eggs, berries, and small lizards are part of their diet as well as the bamboo. So let's get some of those extra dietary benefits in here. Maybe some pomegranates sprinkled in. Maybe some honeysuckle and goji berries soon. We finally have so many Taito coins. This area, this biome in particular, actually gives us about 300 Taito coins every time we visit after it's been a few months, uh, like the three months passing, because of how much biodiversity we have here. And I do love that you get rewarded for the sheer number of animals and plants that you're able to support at one time. And I think that's really fun because it challenges you to try to reach as much of the occupancy and the balance between all of the life forms as you can. All right, how you doing? How you doing, little ones? Take a little snooze because you're adorable. All right, and how often do they reproduce again? I'm trying to remember. Both male and female red pandas may mate with multiple partners multiple times in one annual breeding season. In your biodome, however, they will reproduce more often. Red pandas produce about two offsprings at a time. Very nice. All right. So they reach maturity about 18 months and they live to be about nine years old. During those first 18 months, the mother takes care of her offspring. She spends more than half her time with them. Oh, and the panda disappeared. <laughs> All right, little one. Oh, there you go, buddy. There you go. Where are you headed off to? I want to see what he wants to go eat. So we're going to follow this panda around and we're going to figure out what he wants to eat. And then we're going to have like a little panda corner over here. And then while we're waiting, while we're working our way over with this panda, I'm just going to sprinkle down like other things like ferns and anything else I think might make a nice little addition to this side of our biome. Because this is bamboo grove and I'm utterly in love with it. It's definitely like... It's honestly like one of my happy places to come to and just relax in. We'll even put some little blue poppies down here so they can start spreading around the place and looking pretty. So yeah, we're keeping an eye on where he's going. I have no idea what he's gonna try to eat, but I, I wanna see. Joint furs actually would look good on this stone. Hi buddy, are you trying to eat that bamboo? He's like, no, I'm just gonna take a nap in the bamboo forest. Alrighty then. All right, maybe I can sprinkle some joint furs over here somewhere. All right, well, we're still following the red panda to see what he's up to and where he's going. Is he coming over to eat the goji berries or... Are you, did you just walk over here to take a nap? Is that where you're going, little guy? He's like, I'm really hungry. I'm guessing goji berries. He's going for those goji berries. And... And... Dun, dun dun That was it! So he wanted to have some of those delicious fruiting goji berries. So that tells me we need to come into our little bamboo grove over here and add in a few more goji berries because they definitely enjoy the goji berries. 
And then while we're here, also some ferns. And I'll even put in a little population of pika. And maybe another group of staghorn beetles. I really, I'm a sucker for how cool the staghorn beetles look. But we can also put in a little population of pika in just a moment to enjoy the area. Like a tiny little patch of fairy grass to start spreading around the place. And maybe some scavengers. And then we can put in maybe some moths. I just love it. I love being able to look into one small little spot and seeing the sheer expanse of biodiversity that we've managed to kind of tuck into it. All right, so let's go ahead and put in the little pika population. Squeak, squeak. Oh, you guys are so cute. Okay, don't eat that too quickly now. We need it to kind of stay there and spread, all right? They're off to take naps too. So cute. All right, and now we'll get some ants down, and then I think we're good in here. Everything is pretty balanced. And next time we visit Bamboo Grove, we will be adding in elephants. So that's going to be my big goal, adding in elephants. And we just have to keep an eye on that red fox family, but I think it should be okay. We have so many pika populations. I think that having a fox family involved won't destroy everything. But all right, so I'll see you guys next time when we will check in on our wolves. And then I have a feeling we will be coming back to Bamboo Grove for a day or two. Because I really, really, really love it here. And I just want to continue to working on, like, continue working on its beautiful pomegranate trees and ferns and rhododendrons. And seeing what it's like having the elephants involved. So until next time, guys. Bye-bye.